In other words, it means remaining spiritually strong, unwavering, and firmly committed to God despite of any hardship or circumstances. It means remaining spiritually strong, unwavering, and firmly committed to God despite of hardship or circumstances. Amen. We have to stay steadfast in the things of God. The word unmovable is an adjective. It describes, amen, it describes our position, unmovable, amen, not able, willing to move or change, especially now because there are so many voices out there, and they're all screaming, amen, trying to get your attention to them and trying to pull you off the word of God, amen. So we're going to have to be steadfast and unmovable, especially in the things of God, and especially now. Yeah. But God is telling us to stay steadfast and unmovable. He said, do not compromise and do not change the word of God. God said, do not compromise and do not change the word of God. He showed me that God, he said, that God, his word is a binding force of all things. In other words, it attaches, it's the attachment that causes things to be. God's word is a God's word is, a, is the binding force of all things. It attaches, it's the attachment that causes things to be. See, when God said, let there be light, the Bible says there was light. And I believe what happened was that the God's word went out and attached itself to light and brought light out of the spirit realm into the natural realm. Because, see, the light that was in Genesis 1 and 3 was not the same light that God talked about in Genesis 1 and 16. In fact, let's turn over that. Let's look at it. Genesis 1. One and three. It says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now drop down to verse 16. It says, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmaments of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and divided the day the light from the darkness, and God saw it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So the light that he created on the first day was not the same light that he created on the fourth day. Right. Well, where did the light come from? I believe the light came from himself because the word of God is a binding force. It go get the word of God and bring it to to the, to the reality and to the natural realm. It takes it out the spirit realm and bring it to the natural realm. Wow. The Bible said we can have whatsoever we say when we line up the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because the word of God is a binding force. It attaches itself to the word of God and it brings us from the spiritual realm into the natural realm. The word of God rules over all things. Amen. In fact, turn your Bibles to Ecclesiastes 8. Ecclesiastes 8. And four. Mm -hmm. Please ask it eight and four. Are we there? Amen. I'm gonna have a few more pages. The please ask is eight and four. Because the word of God is power, it's in a it's a binding force. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so whatever the word of God says it can go into the spirit realm and bring it out into the natural realm. It says that where the word of the king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? In other words, what God says is so. <laughs> if he said it, it is so. It has the power. The word of the, word of the king has the power. The Bible says Jesus is the king of all kings. Yeah, right. Lord of all lords. So if the king said it, amen, it is so, amen. It has the power to do what it needs to be done. 
The Amplified Bible says, for the word of a king is authoritative and powerful. And who will say to him, what are you doing? Because he has the right to do whatever he, he, he wants to do. He's the creator of all things. So if the word of God is a binding force, amen, speak the word of God on what you need. The word of God rules over all, over everything, which causes us to have the victory. Turn to Psalms 103 and 19. Because the word of God, it rules over everything. Amen. This world was created by the word of God. So it rules over everything. When God said, let there be light, light came. If it had to come from him, it came. Amen, because he said the, power, the word of the king has power. Psalms 103 and 19, it said, The Lord had prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rooted over all. Even though he's in heaven, his kingdom still rules over everything. Yeah. So whatever it is that we believe in God for, apply the word of God to it. That's the binding force that's going to go into the spirit realm and bring it to the natural realm. But we got to be steadfast and unmovable in it. The Amplified Bible said, The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his sovereignty rules over all the universe. He rules over all the universe. So whatsoever God said, it is so. Amen. Amen. Sister Nicole, years ago, preached a message and said, it is so. Amen. Amen. And it is. It is so. Whatever God said, it is so. Amen. Amen. See, God's word is the foundation of all creation. Everything was created by the word of God. Yeah. Everything. You was created by the word of God. I was created by the word of God. Everything that we have was created by the word of God. It's better, good better than what y'all plan to. <laughs> Go to 1 Corinthians 15. Back to 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Because the word of God is powerful. Amen. And it's, it's powerful enough uh, for us to stand in it and be steadfast and unmovable. First Corinthians 15, 58. It said, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So wherever you're doing, you're standing in the Lord, your steadfastness, your unmovable is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. 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 The, the God's word translation says like this. So then, brothers and sisters, don't let anyone move you off the foundation of your faith. Amen. And we said that foundation is the base of the underlying support in which something stands on and is normally below ground. You can't normally see the foundation, like the foundation of this building. You can't see the foundation of the building, but it's the, it's the thing that's holding this building up. Right. Right. So the word of God is the foundation. It's what's holding you up. It's the, underground, it's the underlying support <laughs> of what you stand on. Well, this Bible, it is the, it's our foundation. It's the base or the underlying support that we stand on. In other words, this Bible governs what is right and what is wrong in your life. Right. It provides a platform on which to build everything in our lives on. Yeah. Amen. Whether it be marriage, it, got, it tells you how to build a marriage. Yeah. If you're single, it tells you how to be single. If you're raising children, it tells you how to raise children. If you're in ministry, it tells you how to be, how to, what to do in ministry. It tells you how to love. It tells you the mentality that you're supposed to have. Everything in our lives, it's just a platform for. Yeah. <laughs> the word of God tells us what, to, what we are to believe and what we are to reject. But we have to be led by the spirit of God. Amen. Listen, anything or anybody that goes against the word of God, we should reject it. The Bible gives us tools by which we make decisions and help us to come to the correct conclusion. Right. See here in, in chapter 15, 
Paul was writing to the church of Corinth, amen, to be steadfast and unmovable in their beliefs and in things of God, which he had taught them. See, Paul had to correct the false teaching concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ because some of them had a problem with the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ. They believed that life completely ends in death and that the human spirit continues into an afterlife without a body. Amen. Amen. So Paul had to write to the church of Corinth and correct that. Amen. Because if there was no resurrection, <laughs> then Paul said that his preaching would be in vain. Right. Amen. So he had to go back and correct the false teaching. Amen. So it is in our lives. Amen. You have to go back and correct the false teaching, the things that we've been told or been told that contradicts the word of God. So in verse 3 and 4, in, in, verse, in Corinthians 15, Paul describes the contents of the gospel. He said, For I declare unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. But he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Well, that's the gospel. Yeah. That's the gospel. That's the good news, amen, that Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. Yeah. But I think the problem was that they had a problem with that again. Mm. It would begin to confuse them, amen, as if Jesus had rose a second time from the dead. Mm. But one of the words in the Hebrew, in, in the Greek, for that word again is afresh mm. or anew, amen. So in other words, Jesus returned to life. He came back from his pre he came back to his previous form. Yeah. In other words, he was alive before, then he died. Now he back again alive. Yeah. So Paul was teaching them that because of the resurrection, we can experience benefits. Amen. And it's amazing that today, world, that we are more conscious of our benefits on our uh, employment. Yeah associated with our employment, amen, that we all, with the things that Jesus has made available for us. We want to know, you know, we know what kind of insurance we have on our job. We know what all it covers. We know what the retirement package is, amen, but how familiar are we with the benefits that Jesus has made available for us? Because he has made some benefits available for us. Turn back to Psalms 103 and 1. Amen. Even David was telling us, don't forget the benefits <laughs> because the benefits is important. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Don't forget the benefits because the benefits are important. Amen. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Mm -hmm. Amen. And me, Pastor told us on last week that, um, that David was singing this song, amen, to stir up his soul, amen, uh, up to praise God, to thank him for all that he has done. And sometimes that's what we have to do. We have to stir up, we have to stir up our soul up, amen, yeah. because our soul consists of our mind, our will, our intellect, our imagination, our emotions. And sometimes we have to stir it up, amen, so we can keep the, mindful of the blessing that God has done for us. Yeah. This this morning, how many people got up this morning and said, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the breath you gave. Thank you for waking me up for another day. Thank you for your joy, your peace. Thank you for all that you've given me. Amen. Because sometimes we forget. Amen. Because it's so natural. You know, we sometimes we don't think about, that's just a blessing of the Lord. Amen. See, to bless God, it requires involvement, involvement of your inner man. Your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotion, that's your inner man. Amen. See, you have to bless God from a pure place of the heart, not just lip service. Amen. Matthew 15 and 8 says, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And that's not how he wants us to worship him. That's not how he wants us. He wants to be thankful all the time. That's what David was saying. He was saying, Bless the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless his holy name. Amen. So we have to bless God. Amen. Bless him. The pastor told us last week that if we don't stir up our soul, we will soon forget. Amen. Turn to Deuteronomy Romans 8. Deuteronomy 8. 
Deuteronomy 8 and 10. Amen. Because we don't want to be like this. Amen. It says, when thou hast eaten and art full, then shalt thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he had given thee. And we know that's true. You know, when God bless us, oh, boy, we just full of blessings. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for my heart. I thank you for my tree. I thank you for my car. I thank you for my, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Amen. Beware, the Bible says, that thou forget not the Lord thy God is not keeping his in, in not keeping his commandments and his judgment and his statutes, but I command thee this day. Drop down to verse 14. Say, then thou heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And so many times, it happens so many times. You know, I watch it. You know, people, they believe God for this. They believe God for a job. God bless them with the job. They stop coming to church. Oh, believe God for a car. They bless them with a the car, and they stop going to church. Go everywhere else with the car. Up church, amen. Then God, you know, they believe God for all this, they believe God for money. God bless them with the money, amen. They do everything, but pay tithes. don't pay tithes, you know. So it's, it's like He said, Don't forget the benefit, don't, don't forget Him yeah. when He bless you, when you're in the land of blessings, amen. Don't forget the Lord. Amen. That's the time we should really be being given forth, you know. Lord, I thank you for carrying me this far, for doing all that you've done for me, amen. Amen. First three back into. Oh, you can keep his place on phone, 103. It said, who forgiven all thy iniquities, who healed all thy diseases? Say, who forgiven all thy iniquities or thy, our sins? Amen. Forgiveness. He knows that, he, that David put forgiveness first. Amen. Because for forgiveness, because before forgiveness can be made, one must repent. Mm -hmm. See, repentance I was reading the thing, and, it said, and, I, and the Lord was showing me something. And it was like, repentance was like a birth canal. He said it was like a birth canal, which, let's see, let's see. Repentance is like a birth canal through which people enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. They say that when a baby passes through a birth canal, the baby head will change position so that it can go pass through. Yeah. Let me see it again. Repentance is like a birth canal through which people enter into the kingdom of God. They say when a baby passes through a birth canal, the baby head changes position so it can pass through. See, that's how it is with godly repentance. There must be a change of mindset. Amen. See, in godly repentance, there must be an abandonment of your past and a complete surrendering to the lordship of Jesus Christ. I think that's what happens so many times that we go into the, trying to get into the kingdom of God, but we haven't really repented. We haven't godly repented. We have not changed our mindset. We have not let go of our past, our old life. Amen. We're trying to bring all this stuff into the kingdom of God, and it won't fit. You got to, ch you got to move your head so that you can go through the canal. Amen. So Jesus forgave us, or pardoned us from our sins. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So Jesus delivers you. Amen. Still is. Amen. So Jesus delivered us from sin, death, hell, and the grave. And he gave us power over all of it. Amen. Verse 3 says, he healed all our diseases. You know, there's not, but Jesus only took, not only took, because that was a whole lot, 39 stripes. But they say the 39 stripes, care, I don't care what kind of disease you have, it falls under one of those stripes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even if they try to come up with some more, something else, amen, it's going to fall under one of those stripes. Mm -hmm. So whenever it comes along, he's already delivered us from it. But Thank we you. have to stand and be steadfast and unmovable. And I know sometimes things get tight, get hard. We have to, we have to get somebody to help you hold your arms up. They maybe have to hold you up. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But don't stop fighting. Amen. Yeah. Isaiah 53 and 5 say he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. He was bruised for our negatives. And test times for our peace was upon him, but by his stripes we are healed. Amen. It said, who redeemed our life from destruction. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, I tell you, that's, I've been standing on that one too. Mm -hmm. Jesus purchased our life from destruction. Yes. The word destruction in the Hebrew means, it means a pit or a trap. It means corruption. It means dishonest. It means fraudulent. It means bribery. 
It means grave. It means this base uh, reduced in quality of value. So that means that he has redeemed us, amen, from destruction, from corruption, from fraudulent. People try to, trying to fraud you, amen. He has delivered us from that. That's why the Spirit of God, like um, um, uh, Brother Monty was saying today, you know how it's something you can feel. It's something about it when something ain't right. You can feel it in your spirit because he's delivered us from that. He was telling you, no, no that's a destruction. Amen. And you've been delivered from that. So you have to go with fraudulent. Amen. Bribery. Dishonesty. Amen. You know, something in your spirit let you know, no, this, they dishonest. They're not telling you the truth. Amen. You have to go with them things. We, this is part of our benefit. Amen. Corruption. You know that stuff ain't right. Amen. And your spirit let you know, mm-mm, mm-mm. Don't go there. Don't do that. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Amen, because he has delivered us from the, the spirit of this, our life, from destruction. So we don't have to go through that if we only obey. Amen. Yeah. Be led by the spirit of God. Amen. He crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Amen. That's my confession. For the last about a month and a half, when I wake up in the morning, while I'm still in bed, I say, Lord, I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies that are new every morning. I receive them. I thank you, Father God, for your joy that's a fresh every, every morning because they the joy coming in the morning. So I thank you for your fresh joy that comes every morning. You know, and it's time, it's, you know, started welcoming what he's given us into our lives. And you'll see things started changing. You'll be more at peace, amen. You can see stuff from afar. You know, you begin to see more, amen. But we see the benefits. That's all of our, all of this are our benefits that he has made available for us. And Paul was saying, David said, don't forget them, amen. But we got to know what they are so we can walk in it, amen. It said, who satisfied their mouth with good things so that their youth is renewed like the eagle. Now, my interpretation of that was, and it was working for me, <laughs> that I believe that God was, how the Spirit of God began to change your words yes. so you won't be speaking negative and death Amen. and stuff like that, and that you're more cautious of your word. Amen. And that word would produce life in you. Amen. And it, can, it would renew your strength. Amen. But they were saying that the mouth in the Hebrew means the days of thy old age. It said, who satisfied thy age with good things. Yes. Amen. The scripture, in the script, in the scripture, eagle symbolizes strength, vitality, and speed, and it was a metaphor of the transformation power of God. How even your old age, Amen, that He can restore our strength, Amen, yeah. our our youth, Amen, speed us up. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> amen. Me too. Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen. I don't know why we slow down. Amen, amen. Amen, but I thank you for my youth being renewed like the eagles. Lord, I thank you. Amen. The commentary says that, said that when David said, my youth is renewed like the eagles, that he acknowledged that God has sustained him and satisfied his soul with such goodness that even in old age he felt young and strong. Amen. Amen. So there are many benefits that God has made available for us. Amen. But we have, must know what they are. He has given us his Holy Spirit to abide in us, to lead us and guide us in all truth, who comforts us. Amen. Show us things to, to come. Amen. He has given us his mindset. We got the mind of Christ. Amen. So we will be thinking like Christ, reason like Christ, handling things like Christ, speaking like Christ. Amen. Because this is a benefit that he has given us. He has given us angels that who protect us, who fight on, who minister on our behalf. Amen. Who hold us up in their hand, keep from dashing our foot against a stone. We got ministering angels. Amen. We got financial angels. We got uh, war angels. Amen. All encamped around about us. But we don't know we have these things. We won't receive the benefits of it. Amen. He gave us the power of his word. Amen. And that's powerful. To change things. Amen. Because everything in the kingdom of God is voice activated. Thank you, Lord. Right. you will not be able to receive it until you put voice to it. Yeah. Amen. Everything in the kingdom is voice activated. Yeah. Amen. So keep your words in faith and keep your words positive. Amen. Amen. So be steadfast and unmovable, especially during these last days. Amen. 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 May God bless you. I pray you receive something this word. Amen, amen. 
Amen. Turn back your hand to the pastor, Apostle Kaiser. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Amen.